Hi, my name's Natalie Miller and I am a textile artist and I am here today to teach you tapestry weaving. Here we have a ready-made loom that you can buy commercially. Also, there is a loom that you could make if you get bits of timber and screw fix them. So all it is is really just a simple rectangular square and then you have a loom. You do warp up differently on these looms, which I will show you. And also, if you don't have access to any of those, you could also just make your own with a bit of cardboard and cut notches in here. And this is fabulous for kids for a little project if you want to do that. So with your warp, you do want to use a strong tapestry warp or a strong cotton that won't break. You, If you don't have access to warp, tapestry warp, you can always use twine. Just basically if you go like this and it doesn't break. So then everything in between is called our weft. And so I'm using my wool, my hand dyed wool, and also roving, which is basically from a sheep's fleece, and then they clean it and cart it together. And then if you gently pull like that, this is called the staple length of a sheep. So we have, yeah, wool and roving to use today. We're gonna to take our warp and we are going to tie it around the bottom bar and now I'm tying it one in so the second notch in because because I only use my hands to weave I like to be able to get my fingers easily around the edge so we're not going to tie in the first notch but on the second one and then we just tie with a double knot and then we take our warp up to the notch directly above it which is the second notch in and then we loop around the nib and down and continue this all the way along until we get to the second notch from the end. Okay, so coming to the end, then we're warping, finishing off the second notch from the end. I'm going to cut around a ruler's length to be able to tie around the bottom bar. So I've started by tying on on the bottom bar and now I'm going to finish on the bottom bar as well. I'm not going to tie on the top bar because I want to have an even amount of warps when we do our tassels at the bottom. So we just wrap the warp around a couple of times so that we retain our tension and then we also want to check that this is like guitar strings. If it's too loose you're going to go back and pull these until you get the right tension. So once you've loop, looped around the bottom bar, then again, you do a double knot to finish your warp. And then you can just cut. And so now you have a warped up loom and ready to weave. So what we're going to do now is a row of double horizontal half hitch knots. It does sound a bit daunting, but I will teach you how to do that. So we're going to start that with our warp around five centimeters from the bottom bar. So we're going to take on something typically this size, we'd need about a meter of your warp or twine. And then we're going to put it in a little butterfly or a little ball because the cotton twine does knot quite easily. So then what we're going to do is tie just a double knot around our first warp. And the reason why we're doing a row of these knots is to hold all our weft in position. If we didn't do the row of knots and we took our weaving off the loom, all your weft would just come off. So basically we need this to hold all our weft in position. So we've done a double knot and then we go to the next adjacent warp. Middle finger is picking up the warp, pointy finger is acting like a hook. 
and you're going to hook your warp around and then go over the top of the warp and through the center of that triangle you've created. So the first one is just the loop. You want to do that twice, which will create the knot. So two of these on each warp. And you do that all the way along till the end. The trick is you don't want to bring that too tight so that the warps are coming together. You also don't want to do it too loose so that when you do your second knot, you have a big loop. So the trick is to just pull the first loop so that it's parallel. Then you do that again and pulling in position and you do that all the way along to the end. So the first thing we're gonna do is the rhinos, which are the tassels. And so when we weave, we always weave from the bottom up because if you started from the top, you wouldn't be able to get your hands under the warp. So what we're gonna do is start with our tassels at the bottom. So we're gonna grab whatever color you'd like, but in this design, we're starting with the white. So using 12 ply wool, and depending on what type of wool that you use, you may use four ply, eight ply, 10 ply, 12 ply, or even 20 ply. So when you do your tassel, you want to cut your length at around 30 centimeters or a foot, and then double that. So I have a length of around two feet or 60 centimeters. And I'm going to be using six strands of the 12 ply wool. And so I take my length of six at around 60 centimeters long, give it a snip. And now we're gonna create our first tassel. So to create our tassel, we grab two warps and we go under the two warps and the center, we bring the center of the yarn here. And then we're grabbing the end and we're looping from the back. We wanna come from the back to the front, underneath. So we pull that through there and we gently pull our tassel down. So we have our first Raya knot tassel. And then when we do our next one, we go on to the next two warps. So doing the same thing again, 30 centimeters, 60 centimeters, six lengths. Now, if you were using really thick wool, you'd potentially only do three of these. If you're using really fine, say four ply or eight ply, you may have to use 16 lengths. So the second tassel, we're going under the adjacent two warps. grabbing them with one hand. Now it doesn't matter if you go left or right, you just wanna take all your fibers to the back and coming through the center of those two warps. Bring them through and carefully bringing it down just above your row of knots. So you're gonna continue that all the way along. Now that we have finished our row of tassels, we are going to cut our base. So I'm gonna cut it straight across. You may, however, really like that loop feel, so you may retain that. You also may wanna cut it in an arrow or you can cut it however you want. However, we are gonna cut it straight. to give that nice sharp edge. You do need good scissors for this as well. And then you can cut, just cut all the little loops if you have any. So 
So now we're ready to weave. What tabby weaving is, is just plain weaving under, over, under, over. And potentially that is what weaving is. Under, then over, under and over. The next row is the opposite. So I'm gonna take some of this natural wool again. And you wanna take around, say three meters or three yards, something manageable. And then get it into a little ball. The reason why you couldn't use that whole big ball, it's very hard to bring under each warp. So what we're gonna do is we have our little ball of wool. And now to start, we want to hitch on. So to hitch on, we take our little length, maybe an inch under the first warp. And we just tuck that under. So what we're doing is hiding the tail. We don't want to have the tail hanging out at the side. So hiding the tail under there. And now we're gonna pick up every second warp and take our yarn under. So under, over, under, over. Now when you weave, you don't wanna to pull too tight because if you do, your whole weave will come in like this. So you wanna create like a little sunrise with your wool and then with your fingers, you can compress that down. Now if you're working much larger scale, you can potentially use a beater which you would beat down your yarn. But at this scale, it's fine to use your fingers. So you're gonna go all the way across for the first row. Now you're gonna do the opposite on the second row. So if I'm looking at what's this row, my yarn is going over the warp. So now I wanna go under the warps. So I'm looking at the row below, and if I see the yarn is going over the warp, I wanna pick up that warp to make my yarn go under that. So again, not pulling too tight, creating a little sunrise, and then with your fingers, compress down your wool. So we're gonna do in this design, say half an inch of plain tabby weave using only single strand. So now we're coming to the end of our single tabby weave and we want to hitch off again to hide the tail. So what we do is we continue to weave and then you can see my yarn is going over the warp. I actually want to bring that under. So whenever you hitch off or hitch on, you always go under. And I've got two unders, that's okay when you're hitching off. And then you take the end and you just loop it under again. So it actually turns it back into an over. And then you can hide your tails and your edges are neat. Next is tabby weave. However, we're gonna use Four strands, I'm using 12 ply again, so depending on what ply you're using. Um, however, we are going to use, get around three meters again, and use four strands, so. And then we're gonna tabby weave. However, what we're gonna do this time, rather than going over one, and then under one, we're gonna do that in motions of two. So we're going to go under two and hitch on, hiding that tail. Now what we're gonna do is take our yarn ball over two warps. So essentially it's the same when we did single tabby, but this time we're using four thicknesses going under two, over two warps, under two, and so on. And it just gives you a really beautiful texture. And it's actually quite nice when it twists as well. So again, we probably want to do half an inch or an inch. So the next stitch is the sumac. We're gonna do 
Two rows of sumac, opposite directions, which creates a really fabulous fishtail. Okay, so what we're gonna do is grabbing the yarn that you would like, we're gonna take around a meter and a half of single yarn, and then we're going to get six lengths of that. This is when we're using the 12 ply. But again, you can actually vary it. You may wanna do a thinner or a thicker sumac, so you would either use less or more. So I have my length. What I'm gonna do is go under two warps and hitch on. Again, hiding that tail. So this knot, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hand through the warps that have nothing in it at the moment. So as you can see, my yarn is coming out of these two warps. I wanna put my hand in the clear warps and I'm gonna take it back and pick up three warps going back. Then I'm gonna take my ball of yarn and go back over two and under three, not pulling too tight. So again, the next one, hand is in the free gap, going to pick up three, and then again, yarn is going back over the two and under the three, moving forward. And we continue that all the way along. Again, not pulling too tight because we want to create the nice curvature. So coming towards the end of our first row of our sumac, we want to continue what we're doing. And now we've got no gap, but we just want to take it over the last three, then over the last two, and then you want to hitch off. So what you want to do is pull your yarn just under that end warp. So you're hiding that tail. So we've done one row of sumac. Now we're gonna do two rows of sumac in the opposite direction to create the fishtail effect. So this time we have our length, a meter and a half of six lengths. And then we are going to start on the opposite side this time. And we are going to do the opposite way. So we go under two warps, hitch on. Now with our opposite hand, we're gonna put our hand in again, the spare gap, this time picking up three the opposite way and taking our yarn ball back over two and under three. Again, we're gonna do this all the way to the end. And as you can see, it's creating the opposite direction, which gives that effect. So now we're coming to the end of our second row of sumac. And so we're going to do what we did on that first row is still go to the end. Still, we're still going around the last two warps and then we want to hitch off. And now you can see we've created this fabulous fish tail effect. So the next row we're gonna do is again, single tabby like I did uh, with the white wool, the natural wool, uh, just above the sumac. So we don't really want to put another big texture, say the carpet or the roving directly on top of each other. It's preferable that you do a bit of single tabby or double tabby between those textures. So I'm gonna probably do maybe a centimeter and a half of single tabby weaving. Again, you're gonna take a manageable roll of wool and hitch on. and do some tabby weave. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is the carpet. Now the carpet's super fun to do. So 
What it essentially is, is lots of little rhinots, tassels like we did here, but in small version. Then we're gonna give it with nice sharp scissors, a nice clean cut, which creates a cut pile carpet look. So to do that is Again, like we did here, we want to use little lengths of six. So what an easy way to do it is take the longer length of six and then just cut them in little pieces. So maybe around 10 centimeters. You don't want to cut them way too long because you'll just be wasting way too much wool if you then have to cut them short. So the shorter you can do, the less wastage, definitely the better. And so what you do is again, like the tassels initially, we're going to go under two warps and bring the yarn from the back to the front and through. And you can see you have a little mini tassel, which is very cute. And then we're gonna do the first row again with two warps, the next two warps and so on. The next row, we're gonna do alternate warps. We need to do about a minimum of three rows of this. Once we get to the third row, we are going to do alternate warps from the level below. So once we've done three rows, now we're ready to cut. So again, you need some pretty good scissors for this and just be really careful not to cut your fingers off. So it actually kind of looks cool like this as well if you wanted to leave it. However, if you want the cut pile carpet effect, be carefully going to cut this, just making sure you do not cut your warp. You don't want to cut your warp. So just be super careful. And you can style it in whichever way you like, rounding the edges. Yeah, it's super fluffy, super fabulous. So next row, we're going to do double tabby again. So we're going to take whatever color you choose and we are going to grab around maybe two meters and again, four lengths. So one, two, So again, this time we're going to go under two, over two, under two, and so on. So again, hitching on. So again, continue this until you run out. And you also want to ensure throughout the process of weaving, always compress this down so it's super tight. that we're going to do is go back to single tabby weave again. I'm using this hot pink again, maybe two and a half to three meters of length and just weave that until you've run out. So again, just under over one at a time, always hitching on. Again, remember always to be loose when you're weaving, so creating that little sunrise. But you do want to tightly compress it down with your fingers.
and then the next row the opposite, just using singles. And once you've finished that, you hitch off. So now that we've finished our single tabby section, we're going to do sumac again. However, this time we're only going to do one row of sumac. So again, I'm using magenta. However, you could use what you wish. And this we are going to take one and a half meters of, maybe we'll shake it up this time and use four lengths rather than six. So it will give you a different texture. So again, under two, hitch on. Hand in the spare gap, go back and pick up three and taking the yarn back over two and under three. Spare gap, back and pick up three warps. Yarn goes back over two and forward under three. Again, not pulling too tight. Continue this all the way to the end. So now that we've finished one row of sumac and we've hitched off at the end, we are going to do around two and a half meters of just single tabby again. So I'm gonna use some purple, um, just taking single length, two and a half meters, and I'm just gonna use all that up. Again, into your little yarn ball. And then what you wanna do, hitch on. And then single tabby, under, over, under, over. Next row, the opposite. So what we're gonna do now is to create a shape. So I'm gonna teach you how to do a triangle just with single tabby weave. So what we wanna do when we do a shape is my triangle, I'll weave first and then I'll come back and infill the sections. Now, for example, if you were doing a circle, you would, you always have to weave what's underneath first. So if you were doing your circle, you would weave underneath to halfway of the circle and then do the full circle. But today we're going to do a triangle. So my triangle will be in saffron. So this is naturally dyed, this color. And I'm gonna take around three and a half meters. So to do the triangle, we want to start off by hitching on and then single tabby weave all the way to the end turning back and now to do the triangle what we want to do is drop as we go up each row we drop a warp either side so we are going to go not all the way to the end but we're going to drop that one and we are going to turn back at the second one from the end and so when we go along here, again, we're going to drop the end warp and so on. So the next row, we drop two. So we're dropping firstly one, then two, then three, then four, but one each row. And so that's gonna create your triangle. Do run out of wool and you still haven't yet finished what you wanted to weave what you do rather than hitching on and off again you can just take your next bit of wool and tuck that down under and your next piece will just tuck under in the next gap and then you can just continue as is and then when you get to the peak of this triangle as we've used an even amount of warps, which we needed to do for our tassels, our peak is of the triangle is actually going to be 
over two warps rather than one. So returning here and so these last two are going to be the central point. So just going to turn there and we're going to hitch off. So when you hitch off you always go under. So as you could see that was going to be an over but we take it under and then hitch to the back which turns it back into a over. And so now we have our triangle. And so now we can fill in at the sides. So we take maybe a couple of meters of single length. And then what we want to do is hitch on at the end. So this time we're going to hitch on there and build up that triangle. And then we'd start a complete new piece from this side and build up to here. So hitching on. And this time, rather than dropping warps, we as we progress up, we are going to pick up a warp. So we're working with the rows. So this time I'm going to pick up this warp, turn back, then pick up the next warp. So when I'm going to come along here and pick up the next warp. And you're going to do that until you reach that peak on the same level. Now we're finishing our second infill triangle. And what we want to do when we come to the end, we want to just ensure for our next row that we are under over correctly. So we're going to start about here. We have an over, under, over, under, over, under, over. So we are going to hitch off here rather than going back. Otherwise it would make for the next row uneven. So now that we've finished our triangles, we are going to do rows of single tabby. However, this time we are going to use four strands of yarn. So I'm going to take the turquoise and again get say two and a half meters and then quadruple it. So I have four strands and I'm going to weave with tabby weaving just going under one, over one, under one. And that again creates a different texture to the previous tabbies. So itching on And just under and over one warp at a time. And as you can see, it is important that we ensured that we had the rows below with the under and overs correct so that we can smoothly go across in our row. So again, just weave until you've finished your length of yarn ball. next stitch that we're going to do is the continuous rye knot which is a really great knot and it creates like loops and you can determine whether you want to have little loops or big loops. It's basically the rye knot, the tassels down here, but we're doing it continuously. It is a bit of a tricky knot, however once you get to learn it, it's fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to use this color, the mint. And I'm going to take around three meters of length to, with six lengths. Okay. So to start off, 
what we want to do. So generally, we're going to be using two warps at a time. So we are generally creating a little rhinot. So only focus on two warps at a time. So our first one, we're traveling from left to right. So we bring in to start off with, we bring through those two warps, our yarn comes to the front. And now we want to create the little loop head, the raya head, knot head. So what we want to do is our yarn is going over those two warps that we're focusing on, over the top, and we're bringing our yarn ball from the back to the front through those two warps. And so you can see that we've created the raya head. And now this is where you determine your loop length. We're going to do in this design relatively tight. So we're now focusing on the adjoining next two warps. We're going to go through the center, out to the left. So we're going to go out the opposite side of which we're traveling. We're creating the loop head at the top over the two warps and now coming from the back to the front from the right. And again, pulling that down. Again, from the front to the back through the center of those two warps, out to the left, creating the head at the top. And now we're going to come from the back to the front through the center of those two warps. And so we're gonna continue that all the way to the end. Can get a bit tricky, but just hang on in there. So now that we've finished our first row of our continuous rye knots, we are going to create our second row and we need to use alternate warps for that. We are going to leave this end warp and not touch that. And so we're going to use these two warps, but this time we're going to go in the opposite direction. So using those two warps, we're going to go through from the front to the back, this time out to the right, creating the head at the top and then coming from the back to the front on the left hand side. So alternate warps from the row below, from the front to the back out to the right, loop head the top, then taking your yarn ball from the back to the front. And so you're gonna continue that all the way along. And then the next row will be again, like the first row, alternate warps and coming from the opposite side. Okay, so the next stitch that we're gonna do is going to be thick and chunky, just one row of it. So here I have the green. I'm going to get a length of, say double the length of the width of the weave. And then I'm going to get 16 lengths. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to hitch on and we're going to go over three warps and under just one, over three warps, under one warp, over three, under one, and do that till you get to the end. This instance at the end, we can only go over two warps and we wanna go under the last one and then we wanna hitch off. So that creates a, a nice big chunky texture. So what we're gonna do now is use our roving. So I'm gonna use the electric blue roving. And probably at this scale of weaving, I wouldn't use it at the full thickness. So I'm going to halve it gently. Larger scale weaving, it's definitely fine to use such a thick piece, but this is very fine. So you do wanna be really careful when you split it. 
So now I'm just going to weave, tabby weave. So hitching on. However, what's really great about using roving is that if you want to create a bubbly effect, you can pull it out as you go. And it creates this beautiful texture. Now that we have finished our couple of rows of uh, using the roving, which gives a really beautiful soft textural look, we also want to ensure that we are compressing our weave down to make it tight and compacted. So the next stitch that I'm going to do is single tabby again. However, this time just using two strands of yarn. So I shall use the indigo and grab around two to two and a half meters, whatever you would like, and then just weave with that until you have finished. So again, single tabby, however, this time using double strands. So hitching on, and then under and over, under and over each wall. It's actually getting quite tight. However, we are gonna be finishing soon, so it's okay. Okay, so our second final stitch is that we're going to do a sumac, and this time a thinner sumac, so we'll be using four strands. So we're gonna take the gray I'm going to use and a meter and a half length times four to do just the one row of sumac, and then we'll do the opposite side. One and a half. So four strands. So under two, hitching on. And just like the previous sumacs that we have done, we put our hand into that spare gap. Go back and pick up three warps and our yarn goes back over two and under three. Again, not pulling too tight. So now that we've finished our sumac, we are gonna do our final stitch, which is back to single tabby and when you do weave on a loom, you don't want to weave all the way to the top. So, cause we need to allow part of the warp to be able to tie off onto our rod. So we're probably going to do around a centimeter and a half of just single tabby. And I'm going to use black. And this will be our final stitch, which I think is always good to end in a tabby weave, single tabby weave. And again, maybe two and a half to three meters of yarn. Then hitching on and just single tabby under and over, under and over. Okay, so now we have come to the end of our weaving and we are going to do a row of double horizontal half hitch knots, which was the same knot we initially did. Now, this is very important. You have to do this no matter what, because if you don't do it and we cut our warp off our loom, then all our weft that we've spent lots of time doing will fall off. So I'm gonna use for this, the black wool to match the color. However, whatever color you're using, you can match that color. And you can also use the cotton warp as well. It's up to you. But I will be using black wool, so I'm gonna grab around a meter and a half of the wool. And to refresh your memory on this knot, we are tying the first one with a double knot. And then just snipping off the end to a smidgen and then so we, with our middle finger, we pick up our warp. Our pointy finger is like a hook. So we're gonna hook the yarn around, going under the warp, through the center of that triangle, 
And that's our first one. Remember, we have to do two of those to create the knot. And you'll actually find this easier to do at the top rather than the bottom because you have something to lean your knots on. So one, two. So middle finger picking up the warp, pointy fingers a hook. One, two. So we're gonna do that all the way to the end. Okay, so now that we have finished our weave and our row of double horizontal half hitch knots at the top, um, we're ready to cut from the loom, which is super exciting. Now, what I want you to look at at the back, you'll find that there's lots of straggly bits. Now, because you, when you have been compressing your weaving throughout the process, you don't need to knot anything at the back. We just need to snip. So you've got maybe like an inch of yarn hanging. So certainly no need to stitch them in or knot them. And sometimes what you can do, depending on what type of weave you're doing, you can actually iron the back of this to make them all stay in. Okay, so now that we've done that, you also don't wanna take your weaving off the loom until you've cut the bottom row of wire knots. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to Cut right at the top, trying to retain as much warp as you can. So, because you do need quite a bit of length to tie around your rod, which will be holding your weave. So then on the bottom, we can just snip the two ends And then that will just loop off the loom. So there, you're weaving. Okay, so now we are going to tie our weaving onto our rod. So we're facing it upside down on the table and you wanna pull all your warps out flat. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our rod And then I'm gonna bring every second warp back towards our weave. And so you're gonna continue this all the way along until we get to the end one. And then we're gonna place our rod here. And then we're gonna grab one from the bottom and one that we've brought back and do a knot. So we're gonna ensure that our knot is not at the top of the rod, but preferably at the back so you don't see the knot. So you want to continue all the way along till the end with your knots, ensuring that you're picking up the adjoining one. So now that you've finished all your knots, then voila, you have your weave. So the way to hang this is then I'm going to get a little bit of the cotton wool and say that much. And I'm going to do a lark's head knot on the rod so I can hang it. So get that in the center. And you find the central point and what you want to do is get your piece and double it so you've got the loop end and then you're going to thread the ends through and so that you come up through the center of that loop so you've created a lark's head knot and then just give it a one double knot Now you're ready to hang.